Well, hello again from St. Paul's Church National Historics. I hear in Mount Vernon, New York, in our weekly series, History from St. Paul's. Today, recognizing Women's History Month, we explore the life and career of Minnie Dupree, one of the stars burying the historic cemetery at St. Paul's. Born in 1873, Minnie first appeared in a play in San Francisco at age 14. In 1888, she debuted on the New York stage in Held by the Enemy. To accommodate her daughter's career, Eleonora Dupree moved to the town of Eastchester, today's city of Mount Vernon. It was a short ride on the New Haven line to the Broadway theaters. They purchased a home at 228 South 6th Avenue, just a few blocks from St. Paul's Church. Eleonora died at age 51 in 1894 and was buried in the cemetery at St. Paul's. Following her mother's death, Minnie, described in a gossip column of the day as a handsome blonde, and the possessor of magnificent head of curly hair, moved to New York City. She planned to leave the theatrical life in 1896, accepting a splendid diamond engagement ring from a recently divorced multimillionaire cotton mill owner named William H. Langley, who was in his 40s. But for some undetermined reason, they never married, although the two remained close friends and Langley left Minnie $25,000 when he died in 1919. Minnie's acting career continued and it encompassed an impressive array of comedies and dramas over nearly 60 years, hardly missing a year at the theater. This included several critically acclaimed seasons performing on the London stage in the years just before World War I. She was the consummate working actress, sometimes appearing in leading roles, but also accepting supporting parts as necessary to maintain her livelihood. Her Broadway resume lists 33 plays in which she performed. In the early part of her career, 1900 to 06, Minnie performed in a series of leading roles in such plays as Women in Wine, The Music Master, and The Road to Yesterday. In terms of box office success, her most successful New York roles were as Matilda in the 1922 rendition of The Old Soak and as Martha Brewster in the smash comedy hit Arsenic and Old Lace that ran for a remarkable 1,444 performances from 1941 to 45. Historians of the theater usually note that while Minnie was a respected actress, she never quite cracked the top echelon of the theater world at a time when musicals really defined Broadway stardom. During World War I, Minnie studied nursing and worked on the home front with the American Red Cross, confronting but apparently not contracting the deadly influenza epidemic. During the Great Depression, she helped organize the Stage Relief Fund to assist unemployed actors and actresses. Yet, ironically, like many in the theatrical profession, she too fell into poverty and worked briefly for the Federal Theater Project. That was one of the New Deal agencies created to lift the country out of the economic morass. Her film credits were few, but she had a memorable role as an old woman who reformed a family of swindlers in the 1938 production of The Young at Heart, starring alongside Hollywood icons Janet Gaynor and Douglas Fairbanks Jr. A review in the New York Times noted, with all due respect to the names in the cast, the picture is stolen by Minnie Dupree as the aged lady who adopts the Carlton tribe when they are down to their last railroad ticket to London. In every one of her scenes, and they are the backbone of the picture, Miss Dupree gives a heartbreaking, lovely performance. We have provided a link to a scene with Minnie in that movie in the introductory blurb to this video, and we invite you to view it. Minnie occasionally visited her mother's grave at St. Paul's, and more often in the 1930s and 40s, when the church rector was the Reverend Harold, Harold T. Weigel, a friend of the actress. Reverend Weigel had previously served at the little church around the corner, an Episcopal church in the Chelsea section of Manhattan, where Minnie worshiped. Minnie, who never married, was on the stage until three months before her death, last appearing in Land's End on Broadway in 1947. She died on May 23, 1947, and was interred in the family plot at the rear of the St. Paul's Church. Her grave, like those of her mother and brother, is marked by an orange granite gravestone and reads, Dearly Beloved Minnie Dupree. Join us again next week as we continue to commemorate Women's History Month with more stories of History from St. Paul's.